Hey folks, Bill of the North here. Today's video is about staying hydrated outside in the wintertime. One thing you do not want to do is eat snow or ice because that uses a lot of energy and it can lower your body core temperature dangerously. Cold air suppresses your thirst mechanism and you don't realize how much water you are losing to the atmosphere with every breath and that's coming out of your pores. Couple with that that people tend to overdress and you can run into some real problems as a heat casualty, believe it or not, in cold weather. The colder it is, the drier the air is, the more moisture is being pulled from your body. Very important to get liquids in. Now, what I'm using today for my hydration system is a bladder. And this one, the tube is slightly insulated. The temperatures are only about 25 degrees, so I'm able to get away with it. And the bladder itself is in my pack, being warmed by my, my, by my body heat, so it doesn't freeze. Of course, if I was out here for a, a length of time where if the temperature gets much lower, this is going to freeze up. I also have a thermos, which has warm water in it, and of course I can drink that if I need to. Canteens can be a problem. The GI plastic types have a long, narrow neck that tends to freeze up real easily. The metal ones, of course, you can use to heat water or melt snow and ice in, but again, the US GI ones have that small neck and that'll freeze up first. The ones that I like are the French type. They have a wide neck and they are approximately one and a half quarts. So you can break the ice, which tends to be thinner because the neck is wider. You can break the ice and of course you can put it on fire and heat. Now if I can find a picture of an Arctic canteen, those are terrible. They suck. They're, I think they're insulated, but they have a, a narrow, long neck and it just freezes right up. It's a plug of ice. And I believe because they're insulated, it takes a long time to warm them up and thaw out the water inside. So they're a no-go, a non-starter. If you're outside on a multi-day camping trip, probably what you're going to be doing is heating your meals in the morning and at night. And that's a good time to make water for the day that you can keep in a thermos. And of course, you're going to want to have soups and warm liquids to drink with every meal and just um, hydrate as much as you can when you can. Now, a one quart uh, thermos may not be enough water if you're cross country skiing, you're snowshoeing, if you're active during the day, it may not be enough water. You may have to bring another one just to have enough water to prevent yourself from dehydrating during the day. Or you may have to stop and make a warm lunch. The choice is yours, just be aware of the problems that occur. Another problem with being dehydrated is that your body can't take advantage of the energy in your food. You can eat all you want, but if you're dehydrated, you're not going to digest it properly. Your body's not going to be able to use that energy, and you're going to be colder. There are a couple of different ways, though, to have water at least not frozen. Uh, throughout the day. One is just to keep a canteen or a water container close to your body, like inside your coat or your parka, and that'll keep it from freezing. Another one is to put a container of water in a snowbank, and it may freeze on the top, but you'll still have liquid water inside. But again, if you're in a camp, chances are you're going to make a fire, and this may not be necessary. And of course, at night, you can always bring a canteen or some containers of water and tuck them inside a layer of your sleeping bag and hopefully they won't leak. Is that people can become very introverted in the cold. They don't want to participate in group activities. They just, they don't want to move. They just want to sit there by themselves and shiver and not do anything. So if you're in a group, just keep an eye out for people like that. Keep an eye on each other. That could also be a symptom of dehydration as well. So I hope you have a good time outside. Be careful and always take care of yourself. We'll see you next time.